Hello guys, how are you? I'm here with my friend, Dr. Mauricio Gonzalez. We're here in Tulum right now. We came to the Tulum Vegan Fest. It's been a lot of fun. Yes, can you tell us a little bit about you? Sure, please? absolutely. Well, thank you very much for having me again. Well, I'm an internal medicine resident in New York, Metropolitan Hospital Center, New York Medical College. I lecture throughout Latin America regarding the prevention of chronic diseases through plant-based okay. diet. I'm also the creator of a medical immersion the first medical immersion in Latin American called Veggie Power, where we yes. teach hundreds of people about the scientific basis of a vegan diet or a plant-based diet, however you want to call it. And what we're trying to do is to make a shift in public health, going directly to the source, teaching the public regarding this evidence so they can transform their families, transform the communities, transform their environment. That's what I'm most proud of. It's amazing. So if you speak Spanish, you definitely have to check out the next one. <laughs> so today uh, we're going to be talking about gluten because I know that it's a video that you guys have been requesting a lot. What is gluten? It's very simple to describe. It's just a protein that is inside the wheat cereal. Wow. It's a specific type of protein that has been associated with okay allergies, certain diseases, apparently it created sensitivity in persons who are sensitive to this kind of protein, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. how true is it that a large quantity of the population is sensible to gluten or intolerant to gluten? Well, it's very true. What we have is also statistics. We know with hard data that in United States, 1% of the entire population has celiac disease. And celiac disease is an autoimmune disorder where basically what happens is that the body attacks itself when gluten is ingested. Mm -hmm. The only treatment, yeah. the only successful treatment we have is that the patients follow a strict gluten-free diet. And for the other persons who are... This is very interesting, Giovanna, because back in the 90, 1980s, we didn't know about other gluten problems besides celiac disease. Okay. So one of the first case reports were done in the 1980s where people were claiming to their PCPs, primary care physicians, that they were bloated, they were constipated, sometimes mixed with um, diarrhea, etc., etc. So they came up with this theory that they are sensitive to gluten without having celiac disease. So they tested it and apparently it became truth. And now it is a medical recognized pathology, non-celiac disease, gluten sensitivity. Okay. So there's a lot of people who has no celiac disease, however, they are still sensitive to gluten. But apparently two to 6% of the American population is sensitive. To wow. So okay. if you add those it's, numbers, it's not that much. It's not that many people. It's not that much. The, if you add those numbers, what yeah. you have is 93% of the entire American population does not have any sort of sensitivity to gluten. Wow. So what is this whole like craze that we see everywhere, like gluten free and no gluten everywhere, restaurants, supermarkets? Why? Well, <laughs> I'm actually very passionate about this syndrome right okay. so let me tell you my take so far okay. you have the world of science right yes and the world of science it's it's kind of closed it's behind labs behind con behind congresses behind you know like these dark small places where the data does not reach directly to the public yeah right mm -hmm. it's, it's just for us medical professionals or the health community and what happens the is lucky that ones. exactly there's a gap who fulfills that gap? The media. People who have no training whatsoever on how to interpret data. Mm. Or they don't have any training on how to interpret the type of methodology that we do in scientific studies. They pretty much say whatever they wanted to say. I don't think they, they do it on purpose, but then it scares the public. That's what I think this is becoming an issue. What I think is that medical professionals, health professionals, they have to reach the public directly to avoid this source of confusion. And that's uh, basically what our medical immersion is doing, trying to get that scientific data and take it to the public where they can transform their lives without confusion. So why do you think that many people feel good after like not eating gluten? <laughs> that's actually very interesting because yeah, I mean... Because it, I, I have heard it, like, oh my gosh, it feels so amazing, I stopped eating gluten and my life changed. So there are two ways I can answer this question. Okay. 2011 a study took place in Italy where they took I think 920 patients. I think I, I have to recheck the amount of the number of the study. They took these people, they put them on a gluten-free diet for weeks and then they divided those people. Group A 
receive a normal diet, completely gluten free, but they had one muffin per day. Okay. And that muffin was done with gluten free ingredients. Okay. And the other group was also taking a gluten free diet. Okay. They were given a muffin with gluten on it. Okay. Right? So that's the best way to know. That's, a, yeah. that's what we call double blind randomized study. That's like the gold standard for science. And what happened is very funny. Definitely people who were claiming before that they had gluten sensitivity, they actually became worse when they had the muffin with gluten on it. But that's not what it's funny because you kind of expected that, right? Like I'm sensitive, blah, 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 so it makes sense. So what happened is like 15 subjects within the gluten-free muffin group felt bad. Fell back, wow. and they felt bloated, and they so. felt constipated, and they claimed they had diarrhea. So that's what's called nocebo effect, which where you basically get harmless substance, and however, you feel bad. I'm not saying that all the people also experience that, but what I can tell you is this. Uh -huh. When you stay away mm -hmm. from processed grains, mm -hmm. you don't only reduce gluten, Mm -hmm. You reduce refined grains, sugar, hardcore preservatives. So it's hard for us to dissect which specific ingredient is causing this so-called exacerbation of yeah, wellness. Exactly. It could be those. It could be that, not the gluten. Exactly. We don't have a clear-cut answer, unfortunately, right now. Uh -huh. But this is what I'm suspecting right now. Based on the evidence we have so far, you know, remember, science... Uh -huh progresses exactly. and maybe tomorrow we will have another type of evidence by that time we will do another video <laughs> yes yes we will for sure so there's no scientific proof that a large number of the population is sensitive to gluten no or the what we, is bad exactly what we do have like hardcore evidence is that if you have celiac disease it's absolutely mandatory that you stay away from gluten. If you are sensitive to gluten, I highly recommend you stay away from it too. Okay. Like, why bother? The people who do not have gluten sensitivity, they can at least eat it. However, a new study was done in a very good uh, medical journal who has as a theme, the world of gastroenterology. And they found out that the more variety of whole grains that you ingest, the better your microbiota is mm. gonna be. So you're gonna have a richer population of different wow. beneficial bacteria. Beneficial bacteria. Okay? My advice is pretty simple, actually. If you really have a gluten sensitivity, do not eat anything that has gluten. However, whole grains are associated with multiple benefits, like cardiovascular prevention, diabetes prevention, and so forth. Exactly. So you can eat oatmeal that has not been processed in a gluten cereal facility. You can eat quinoa. You can eat, actually, buckwheat, which sounds like wheat, but actually has no gluten on it. And you can eat amaranth, even brown rice. And that yeah. will create a richer population of beneficial bacteria in your okay. gut. I think that's, that's what we have so far, and okay. that's what we can really communicate to okay. the public right now. All right, well, thank you, thank you so, so much My for pleasure. sharing this valuable information with us. You guys should definitely go follow him and you can find him on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, how? Dr. Mauricio Gonzalez, that's uh -huh. Instagram. That's, uh, and on Facebook, you can find me as Dr. Mauricio Gonzalez Arias. Yes, and I'll leave all of his links below and also the links to the resources at Ravana.com. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. We'll see you guys in the next video, okay? Thank you. Bye. Thanks, bye. Bye.